Um, so let's talk San Jose, Minnesota. Opara starts off strong with a corner on the 13th minute. Big header, not at home. Man's unmarked. Uh, nothing, nothing good old Vega can do. PK um, gets given after a VAR decision on a foul on Tommy Thompson. Erickson tucks it home. Jan Gregus hits a rocket that beats Vega low. Amaria gets a goal from another header. Then Amaria misses a PK, and the follow-up is put away by uh, Lode. Deflected goal from Vaco goes in. And then Opara climbs high and nods another one home for the fifth. This game ends 5-2. I think this actually can challenge the Philadelphia LAFC game for a close second. It definitely didn't beat it, but it was definitely the second best game. So my note for this one, Minnesota can do it on a cold, rainy day in San Jose. The first 15 minutes was easily a Minnesota game plan just to sit in, absorb San Jose, get acclimated because they knew San Jose was coming off the buzzing feeling of getting that tying goal against Toronto. So they're like, all right, we're good. We're going, we're moving. And they're like, okay, let them come out, let them come out strong. And then we'll, we'll go at them. And, um, once that was done, they just opened the floodgates and every time they shot the ball, it felt like it went in. Um, we talked about San Jose, right, and how we thought that they were going to struggle this year because they went out and did very little business, and everybody else around them got better, and you really saw that here. Their back line was abused. Their goalkeeper is awful. Daniel Vega is awful, and I mentioned this. I said, I thought, you know, I'll actually turn back on myself here because I thought he was good who made mistakes that you didn't want to see. Nah, he's just plain awful. This man, every time the ball went towards him, it hit him in the hands and went in. He couldn't, he couldn't save anything if uh, – it, it was just so painful to watch as a former goalkeeper. Like, if if you get beat like how Vermeer or um, Blake were getting beat, fine. All, the, all more power to you, right? If you're getting beat when the ball hits you in the hands, on both hands, and still goes in, that's unacceptable. Um, you know, I – and it, it just hurt me, right? Um, but it also this game also spoke to the technical ability of Minnesota. They, they spent a lot of time being really bad, right? Their opening two seasons, they were really bad. But they were patient. They didn't just go out and pull an Everton and just buy anybody. They were really, really calm, and they built. They built the team front to back, and they're strong. And now they're able to play their style of football. Opower can get up and attack on corners. Amaria is going to be disgustingly good. They're back five or six, however they want to play that day, is very good. You know, everybody all over the place is very, very good. San Jose has been around forever, and they're very bad. Um, and and you can't go into – and I know I'll sound like a broken record with this, but you cannot go into a season with a team that missed the playoffs by three points and not by anybody except a defender who is really an attacking midfielder – or a, a wide attacking midfielder. Alan Ace is a good signing. But he's, he's better going forward than he is defensively, at least for the first two weeks from what I've seen. Um, and he's not going to solve all your problems. You really needed a true number nine and a goalkeeper that wasn't awful. And now you're left with Quincy Ameriqua with a backup of Chris Miss from the six, Wondolowski, and Daniel Vega. And, and this team is going to suffer against any half-decent team. Um, you know, in the second half, they showed that they have some sort of technical ability going attack, you know, when they attack, right? Vaco and Erickson started to combine a little bit and create some chances. But anywhere from their center defensive mid straight back, they're just poor. And, and it's going to be difficult for them to get results because I can tell you at, from experience that if your back line is weak or your goalkeeper letting in soft goals, your attackers don't want to play because they figure it, it's, it's useless to go, you know, score a goal when they're just going to give up, you know, give one up anyway, right? Um, Almeida's really good as an attacking-minded coach, but he's got to find a way to share up that defense or they're missing the playoffs again. Um, player of the game, Big Ike, two goals from center back, big day. Uh, Jan Gregus, honorable mention, a goal and two assists. Um, worst player of the game, if you could guess it. That's right, it's Chris Wondolowski. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Daniel Vega, uh, man couldn't save um, a Word document. I mean, it's fine. They have Philadelphia this week. They'll do great. <laughs> well, well, here's the thing, right? Now, now Vega's going to come out and pull out a, a save on one of those 40-yard screamers to the top corner, and then he'll let one go through his legs. 
The craziest thing about that goal is whatever team he, uh, Klesnes played for in Norway tweeted a video of him doing the exact same thing from open play. So not on a free kick, but pretty much the same distance. That's mental. That's insane. So what I'm hearing is he's going to hit one from 50 next game. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> off a goal kick, I think. <laughs> yeah, off a goal kick. <laughs> Um, do we want to move into the segment? Mm-hmm.